right then, let's have a bit of a, a shop chat. So, uh, let me quickly find it. So, there's uh, some videos that I want to go back on. Fucking spot. Uh, <laughs> there's some videos that I want to go back on. And um, one of them is the, the numerous two-stroke um, videos that I've done. Uh, you know, two strokes. This one was, why not stick a valve in? So I was basically saying, you know, there was a lot of people that said, why not just stick a valve in it? So there is a diesel, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of, called the two-stroke diesel. Um, but it's called, it's basically a uniflow diesel. And the way that they work is that they have a piston like so, like normal, goes off the page kind of thing. And at the bottom they have a load of ports, right, like that in the bottom of the, the cylinder sleeve. So it's ports like a, um, a ported, you know, whatever. And if I just reproduce it here, when the piston's down to bottom dead centre, then ports are uncovered, like so. The valve doesn't constantly stay open. Uh, I've been through this, I've done a video about two-stroke diesels in the past. Um, and basically what happens is when the piston gets to the bottom, all the air flows in, like so, yeah, like that. And usually the exhaust port is still open so that can purge the cylinder. And then when the piston's on its way back up, this shuts off. It's filled the cylinder by then, because if you leave this open and let air flow in, this will naturally go to atmosphere. All right, it will naturally just fill to atmosphere. And then as soon as you've got enough, it's not like if you cut these off too early um, by the piston that the, um, what am I trying to say? As long as the exhaust valve shuts before these do, then you'll fill it. Um, inertial filling, they work on, not the work on inertial filling, a lot of the times in this band they have some kind of supercharger, whatever which way it is belt driven or whatever, um, but there's some kind of forced induction and it's it's not really, it is forced induction but it is required for it to work so you can have it boost but you can, you require it to just to get it to atmosphere. Um, otherwise what will happen is, is if you had no kind of um, directionality to this, what would happen is, is the exhaust gases would come out of these holes where you want them just to go one way. You just want them to go from top to bottom like that. So now we've got that down, um, Detroit diesels work like this and everyone says, like this guy said, which was quite funny, he said, um, I know it's been mentioned before, but Detroit diesels blow your theory out of the water. And I said, why can't you do this? The reason why you can't do this, and there's another guy who said Detroit diesels have been dominating the diesel industry, blah, 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 blah. Right, we'll talk about that in a second. The main reason why Detroit diesel arrangements where you have a cylinder, you have a cylinder head with a, what is it, and a valve in it, like this, and ports here, and then a piston. The reason why this doesn't work very well is for the simple reason is that this port duration just isn't long enough. Um, when you start to speed this up, what happens is, is that you go boom on the downstroke, you get to the bottom, and you open these, you know, these ports flood through, but if this was petrol, this would be fueled air yeah this would be you know air fuel mixture it just pissed straight out of the exhaust and you're back to square one with your same problems oiling same problem you need to do the cylinder it's going to all get washed off blah 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 you can have um you know a normal cylinder system where you have a normal sealed system from the bottom but that oil is going to scrape off on these ports, right? It's going to scrape off like a motherfucker and just end up in the flow anyway. Still a problem. The next problem is is that the, it's the forced induction bit. Now, I've been through all this before. The whole problem is with this system 
is that it is its benefit is that it's lightweight and it's cheap and it's powerful for that weight right and for low inertia systems low load systems like dirt bikes and stuff and chainsaws and streamers and stuff it's fucking great the problem is is as soon as you start adding a valve and a camshaft and a chain to drive that and a forced induction system with another belt on all these drawers on the system and all the rest of it you lose your simplicity and cheapness it also gets more expensive and heavy and you're like well what was the fucking point in the first place might as well stick with what we've got but the problem is is it doesn't pass emissions and stuff like that the next thing i wanted to get to was this whole detroit diesel thing now i got some i had a look at because i'm not into trucks and stuff like that um but I looked at some of the numbers for these lorries and so on and so on and so on. And it's actually quite crazy. It's not what you'd, what you'd expect. So I looked at two, right? I looked at two engines. There are other ones to choose from. These are the two that I chose. So make that whatever you want. So there's the, um, there's the Detroit one. I found the numbers for that one. Um, there's the Detroit DD16. And this thing is 2,779 newton metres. It was in pounds, but I've changed it. And 600 horses. It's 15.6 litres. And then the other one I looked at was a Volvo, a Volvo D13A, and this one was five, uh, no, let's do the same, uh, 240 newton metres, it was uh, 520 horsepower, and it was 12.8 litres. And if you work them out, this one is 40.6 horsepower per litre and 187 newton metres per litre and the Detroit, a lot bigger, turned out to be 35 horsepower per litre and 169 newton metres Per litre. I don't know about dominating. Um, for all intents and purposes, they're the fucking same. There's a few differences, you know, they're pretty much the same. Now, this is the crazy thing. If you look at the uh, ranges, right, the Volvo, its torque, its pulling power and stuff is between this RPM. And the Detroit's, if you look at the torque graphs, I've got all this stuff. Um, it's 180 RPM. If you look, the RPMs are the bloody same. But that's the important thing, right? You've got to remember this two-stroke. So not only is it a bigger engine, let's just forget that. Let's just imagine these are the same. And they do do a DD13, but I'd already got these numbers. And like I say, it doesn't really matter. I would expect this to produce more power for the same litre or be shockingly fuel efficient. But the fact of the matter is it can't be shockingly fuel efficient because it's a two stroke. So this 1800 RPM down here, that's 900 uh, power strokes. But it's not because it's a bloody two stroke, it's, it's 1800 power strokes because it is that. Where this one over here, let's just say the same thing. It is 900 power strokes, right? The cylinder, the, they're not using different volumetric efficiencies. They're not using different stoichiometric ratios for diesel. It's still the same bloody fuel. This is doing the work of this for half the amount of fuel. You know, have you got a massive torque advantage? Well, according to this, for this size engine, no. And, and the 13, doesn't matter. 
these are similar. Let's just call them similar. It's a lot bigger, but let's just call it similar. Um, have you got a massive horsepower advantage? No. Are you revving at the same RPM? Yes. The slight difference that this has is that it can pull at higher torque at lower RPM. But that's at 975 and this one's at 1100. I do not think that lorry drivers go, do you know what, I must do this at 975 RPM. Why don't you do it at 1100? Nope, are you fucking mad? You can't do it at 1100. That's, no, it's nothing, it's, not, it's an excuse. You know what I mean? They do standing still talk and they do, uh, you know, once in motion, under momentum kind of thing. But when you look at these numbers, the guy that said that Detroit diesels have been dominating, really? If they are and I'm missing something, I would love to see it. I would expect a 25% improvement in either torque or power. But I don't. I don't even see a 10%. It's actually lower in this example. There might be one or two examples where they're chucking, but you're talking one, two percent change here. What I'm asking is because I'm not, I, you know, I don't do diesels. Um, I, I've dabbled in the past with a past employer, but um, am I missing something? You know what I mean? So this is a shop chat. It's just going out there to say, is this. Am I missing something? Is the Detroit diesel doing something that the Volvo isn't? And uh, as far as I can tell, I can't find it. But the, there's a lot of truck jargon there, and I don't know all that kind of shine. Any road, like I say, this is a, a like I say, it's a, a, a topic, a shop chat. As far as I can see, now nah, you're talking bullshit. The Detroit diesels, it's a lot of talk and it's a lot of power. But so is this a lot of talk and it's a lot of power. Am I missing something? Hope that makes sense. See you in a bit.